Okay, so a new day, new hat, and a new movie to review. This one is a lot more modern than most of the movies that I do for the channel. And in this case, it is 2018's Black Klansman, directed by Spike Lee, starring John David Washington and also Adam Driver. It's based on a true story about a Colorado Springs police officer, Ron Stallworth, who was the first black police officer in that particular department, who, when he starts the gig, is kind of a, considered a, a token person of colour in the department, and that gets put into the records room, which kind of is Spike Lee's parallel to another movie about the first black person in a law enforcement organisation, which of course is from the 1970s, and it is The Spooky Set by the Door. If you haven't seen that movie, check it out. It is full-on hardcore didactic political 1970s exploitation. But to get back to Ron Stallworth, he was a real person, he still is a real person, who did most of the things in the first half of this movie. In the second half there are some plot devices and plot elaborations that occurred in other places to other people, but Spike Lee rolls it in together. Ron's first gig as an undercover cop is to go to a talk given by Stokely Carmichael aka Kwame Toure who was a Black Panther activist, a socialist, and it kind of opens Ron's eyes politically. The interesting thing is we get some of that speech, and from a 21st century point of view, the things being said are perfectly reasonable, but at the time they were considered dangerously radical, and Spike Lee makes that point. The movie doesn't start with that though, it starts in a very interesting and very didactic way. We see a scene from Gone with the Wind, and then we see a 1950s style polemicist, a um, guy who is arguing against miscegenation and um, integration of people of colour into mainstream society, played by Alec Baldwin, and it's played kind of comically that this guy's pretty thick, he's stupid, he doesn't know his lines. Having Alec Baldwin there, of course, is a very salient point because of Alec Baldwin's many, many Saturday Night Live gigs as a certain person who may or may not be in charge of a major country. That person also appears at the end of the movie. After being kind of politically enlightened by this speech by Kwame Ture, Ron sees a newspaper ad for the Ku Klux Klan and he picks up the phone and dials the number while he's at work and pretends to be a white person. This is all in the trailer, of course. He kind of talks to them, he wants to become a member, but he needs an undercover cop who's a white person to actually be the physical Ron Stallworth. That is Flip Zimmerman, played by Adam Driver, who gets to be white Ron. They um, go undercover in the KKK. They find out what they're doing. Most of them are pretty hopeless and pretty disorganized. Though they are run at a national level by a man called David Duke, who is still a player in white supremacist movements to this very day, a point which is made very effectively toward the end of the film. As the two Rons, you can't really say two Ronnies because that's a totally different thing. So as the two Rons go undercover and they infiltrate the uh, KKK, we get some interesting things happening. There's a guy called Felix who is a member of it. He's the extreme radical KKK guy. And the interesting thing is he's not played by an American actor. He's played by a Finnish actor called Jasper Parkinen, which is kind of interesting, a Finnish actor getting that deeply into a Southern American uh, character is a brilliant piece of acting. And uh, leaving aside that kind of cultural transition that he has to do, it is a really, really effective piece of acting. And he is totally believable as this character. We've got a few parallel threads running during this movie, one of which is that Ron builds a relationship with a woman called Patrice, who is a member of various black activist groups on campus, and he doesn't know that he's a cop. So there's a kind of transition there from her not knowing he's a cop and being attracted to him, building a relationship, and her eventually discovering that he is and continuing that relationship. That's a, a fictional construct. At the time that all of these events occurred in the 1970s, Ron Stallworth was already engaged to his future wife. And the other thing that Spike Lee does, which is kind of interesting, is all of these events really happened in real life in 1979, but 
Spike Lee moves them earlier in the 1970s to a more radical time where it kind of fits into the kind of story he wants to tell and it also allows him to then reference a number of cultural touchstones of the time including Superfly, Shaft and bring a very effective moment at the end of the movie. There are just so many slow burn moments in this movie that are really well done. There's one which involves a shooting range where the KKK people are practicing with high power weaponry and I'm not going to spoil that one at all because it is an incredibly effective moment involving both of the Rons which brings us away from the comedy of this movie and into the serious political drama and Spike Lee does this on a few occasions there's one where there's a kind of reference to kick-ass Cleopatra Jones shaft superfly kind of people which transitions into something else entirely and much more seriously and it's done beautifully well the other thing that Spike Lee does which strengthens the drama and strengthens this movie in a lot of ways is he doesn't make the racists cardboard cutouts he makes them fully f rounded human beings yes they're incredibly stupid they're incredibly dangerous they're incredibly hateful but he doesn't steer away from the fact that they're part of the human family and that is the smart move there because it's so easy to set up cardboard villains and then knock them down but Felix the dangerous radical has a wife Connie who is very much a part of his life. She wants to help out with the movement. She's supportive of him. And, and that plays out at the, towards the drama at the end of the film. There's another subplot involving a racist cop, which does get a satisfying ending towards the end of the film. But then Spike Lee does something really, really powerful. We get some closure on the racist cop showing that uh, the police force don't like people who break the rules who are in the police force and then Spike Lee takes it somewhere else he shows us documentary footage of events in 2017 regarding racism regarding white power movements and regarding the president of the United States and an act of domestic terrorism that occurred in 2017 which three years later some people have forgotten. There aren't many movies that move me to tears at the end of them. I'm kind of hardened to a lot of things. But I had tears at the end of this film because a political point and a social point and a cultural point is made in such an effective way in this movie that it blindsided me in the best way possible. Black Clansman was nominated for six Academy Awards and didn't get anything. I think that is problematic. I think the movie deserved recognition. It did get recognition from other awards, but at the Oscars, it got zero with the rim removed. And I think that that's wrong. I think it's a powerful film that will be remembered after many of the films that won Oscars in that year are forgotten. If you haven't seen Black Clans, but at the moment it's showing on Netflix, and you really should check it out. It is an important movie, which touches a lot of the cultural tender spots of our current era in an entertaining way you should check it out this is the third of 12 movies i'm going to do two, every two days and i'm enjoying the process so far it is a lot of fun to cover different kinds of movies from different eras and do short five to ten minute reviews of them if you like this video please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell leave a comment and tell me what you thought of black clansman as well i'd be interested to see what other people's point of view is anyway I'll be back in two days with another movie. In the meantime, look after yourselves. Stay safe. Watch some good movies. Watch some bad movies. Watch comfort movies. Watch movies that challenge you. And I'll see you later.